I hope that opening shot got your attention. That is the 40 caliber extreme shock, 100 grains, very light for caliber. Muzzle velocity advertised of 1,450 feet per second. I'm coming in less than that. A three shot average out of the Glock 23 is 1,393 feet per second. Three shots, I uh, didn't go five because I bought two packs of six. And for each pack, you're looking at about 17 or $18. So you're getting into $2.50 up to $3 per round. And there's folks out there complaining about paying $25 for a box of 20. So how do you feel about that? Let me read you a description of this. This is from the packaging. Tungsten, neutrilium, fragmentable, explosive, entry, air freedom round. Gotta catch my breath. Disintegrates on hard targets, interior walls, and airplane skins. And let me add water jugs. Also, they say astonishing stopping power on organic targets. So we'll uh, try a representation of that here in just a moment. But this is the inside of jug number one, and this is as far as it went. No further penetration. That is a uh, gray talc-like powder, and that is what is underneath that polymer cap. And then I recovered some brass fragments as well. As far as the cap itself, it's gone. I did not find it anywhere, not even a fragment. Now, this is the uh, other pack that I purchased for the testing, and this is what's supposed to happen in ballistic gel. They say, well, you're going to have deep penetration on typical jacketed hollow points, and they're conceding that you're not going to have as deep penetration, but look at that cavity. So, are we going to get that or not? Water is one thing, but let's try ballistic gel. This is the SimTest Media recalibrated to match ballistic gel specs. We've got four layers of denim over the front. BB calibration is 3.6 inches. That was from 10 feet. The air temp is 54 degrees. The block is currently at 65 degrees. I've got some water back up here, but I don't think I'm going to need it because I'm going to predict, I'm going to bet that the nose of the bullet or what's left of it is not going to go beyond seven inches, but I do expect a pretty nasty cavity. And here's my bet on that. You going to raise or match? Way left of where I wanted to go, but nothing has come out of the block. The back, side, or the top. Here's the point of entry, and we're moving along two, three, four inches, and this looks like a typical jacketed hollow point bullet. We're not getting that big expansion cavity we were hoping to see. Now this is about an inch wide at its widest point, but we're not getting that big boom that I was hoping to see here, and that's advertised uh, for how this is designed to perform. Not seeing that. There's that seven inch mark, and actually this is tracking, now let's see, that is the top. That would have been the top of the block. This is the left side as I was cutting through the media. So we're moving through here, tracking up, and look at that. The bullet did not disintegrate, obviously. It is fully intact, made a 180 degree turn. My guess is that the nose of the bullet and that denim did not get along. And let's see if we can figure out where it made the turn. Here is my hypothesis. Let's see, where was that? 10. Okay. The 10 inch mark. There we go. Okay, see that twist in the media right there? I think that's where it made a turn and then continued backwards. So guess what? I lost that one big time. I'm assuming this is due to the soft core being powder and also the tumbling effect it just went through and the stress. I'm getting readings anywhere from 0.377 to 0.390. So coming out, it is not a perfect 40 caliber bullet. The weight is coming in a little bit heavy, 104. 0.3 grains. I know a lot of folks are saying, why don't you just retest this? Well, I could, but I'm not. I always have a second block ready to go just in case this primary, this one, is out of spec. Those do get out of spec from time to time, and that, that really screws up my schedule when that happens. So I always have something else lined up to show you for the next ammo test, as I do with my secondary block today. So I'm not going to do that. Secondly, I adopted the IWBA standard or protocol of this four layers of denim 
uh, to be consistent or close to consistent as possible with the pros. I'm just a you know backyard amateur testing and this is a hobby it's not a full-time profession in no way it never never will be so you got that going I do believe the denim was the culprit here extreme shock has a couple of videos posted on YouTube where they're shooting into ballistic gel they don't go into really any detail you just see a shot into gel and you do see the type of performance that they are promoting that it's going to have so if you accept that that it's going to work as performed against cloth and so forth uh, are you willing to accept minimal penetration when it does work as advertised, uh, but take that great expansion? So that's the trade-off. That's my explanation for not retesting, and I appreciate you watching.